Hey, welcome to another episode of I Can Alter Set with coaches Alex and John. I'm John. Today, we're going to cover Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 7, where we're going to download some JSON data. Let's get started. Alright, Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 7. Downloading data and parsing a JSON file. So in this challenge, we're given a URL, and what we want to do is take whatever data that URL contains and then format it, as you see here, with a date column, and then these four different measure fields. So to begin, we'll go to the developer tool palette, grab the download tool. So this is a tool that you're going to want to use anytime you're pulling data from like a website. Like in this case, we're pulling it from quandle.com. So we'll download data from this URL. Let's just connect a browse and see what we get. All right, so you're going to see the URL again download data and download headers. So download data is what actually contains information that we want. So if you double click on it, you'll see all this stuff and you know it's obviously not really human readable. So what we can do is go back to developer, grab a JSON parse tool, connect it, indicate that the JSON field is download data, and then let's run it again and see what we get. So now we have the URL, the headers, we'll just ignore those, a JSON name and a JSON value string. So the name is every different like object in the file and then the value would be the corresponding value. So see here we've got a lot of like metadata stuff that I don't think is going to be valuable for us. But then down here we have our data set column names. We have nine of them, numbered zero through eight got some more what looks like metadata and then finally getting into the the meat of it with the data set dot data and then two numbers what appears to be the first number should be a row ID and then the second number would be the column ID to correspond with the last number here for each column so what I think I'm gonna do is let's create a filter to just return the data rows so go to the prep, drag on a filter, and so we want it where it contains the word dataset.data. And let's see what that gives us. So JSON name contains dataset.data. Control R to run it. Alright. Okay, so immediately we see we've got some extra stuff here that we don't care about. Let's just scroll through and see how many other times that happens. Okay, so we have three rows that we don't want. So how should we get rid of that? Um, well, I'm seeing that those extra rows that we don't want are a lot longer. So let's count how many characters this is. We got data set is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it looks like our longest string is 17 characters. So let's go back to our filter, make it custom, and add on an AND where the length of JSON name is less than or equal to 17. And let's see what that gives us. It should be, yep, 207. All right, so now it should be that we don't have any weird or extra rows that we don't care about. Okay, so I think the next thing I need to do is split out these numbers to get the row and the column IDs on their own. So let's drag a formula tool. And the first thing I want to do is just change the JSON name and let's get rid of where it says dataset dot data and then that other period and replace it with nothing. So now we should just see a number, a dot, and then another number. Okay, so let's make a new field and I'll call this one row ID. And I want to return everything up until that first period. So we'll do a substring, which if you're familiar with Excel, this is like the mid function. So substring of JSON name, the start will be zero because that's where we begin. And we're going to go until we find a period. 
And let's make this a number as well. Okay, let's run that and see what we've got. Make sure everything looks good. Okay, row ID, zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, sevens. Uh, I think we're good on the row ID. So now let's go ahead and create a column ID. Call it call ID. So what I'm gonna do is go, let's just replace, re, my goodness. Replace. So go into the row ID. Now oh, we're actually going to have to do two strings since row ID is a integer now. So we want to replace that. Actually, I'm sorry. That should be. I was getting ahead of myself. This should be the JSON name. And now we want our two string row ID. Plus that extra period that it's going to have, and replace it with nothing. And we'll do the same thing and call this a number as well. All right, so make sure I didn't mess that up. Looks good though. Zero, 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 one, two, three. Yep. Okay, I think that's good. So now what we have to do is reshape it to get it back into the right form. So go to the transform, grab ourselves a cross tab. So our grouping field will now be the row IDs. Our column headers will be the column IDs and our values will be the JSON value strings and we'll just concatenate those. And let's go ahead and run it. Well, we got 23 records and the output has 23, so that's good. We've got our row IDs, we got and all of our columns. So I remember going back here, we don't have any row IDs. So let's just go ahead and remove that from the data set. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is give these things proper titles. And rather than just using the select tool and manually renaming everything, what we can do is drag another filter tool onto here. And just like before, when we grabbed just the data set fields, here we're gonna grab the column name field records. So we'll do name contains column underscore names, should do it. And if we run that, perfect, just nine records and we got all of our fields there. So what we can do here is go back to the developer palette and grab dynamic rename. That's going to allow us to connect this and rename every column in that data set with some values here, in this case, the value string values. So we're going to rename it by taking the field names from right input rows. Okay, and we want the field to come from, the values to come from the JSON value string field. If we run that, uh, perfect. And now all we have to do is grab the columns that they wanted. So it looks like, okay, so everything from departures onward we can remove. Just do another select. And that should do it. Just make sure everything looks good. I don't see any differences. So there you have it. That's how you use the download tool, the JSON parse tool, some filters, a cross tab, a dynamic rename. We got a lot of different stuff in this one to parse JSON data. As always, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Data Coach channel for more awesome lessons on Alteryx and all things data, analytics, and visualization. Follow Data Coach on Twitter at AskTessellation and follow me personally at jemery underscore dataviz. Thanks again.